welcome back welcome back to my youtube channel so thank you guys for subscribing and um, watching my videos so we're going to be looking at um Fourier series the Fourier series if you can remember um taylor and mclaurin series in which they are they are formulas or yeah they are they were formulas they we, in which we usually use to express functions that are differentiable and continuous but in the case of Fourier series, we can express functions which can neither be differentiable nor continuous. So that's what Fourier, Fourier series is talking about. So in our series of videos of Fourier series, this is our lesson one. Of uh, these are basically our introduction. In Fourier series, we're going to be covering all this. Now we can't just dive straight to Fourier series without you understanding periodic functions and what are sinusoidal and what are sinusoidal periodic function and non sinusoidal periodic function analytic description of your periodic function integral of periodic so you can't understand all this without um you can't you, you can't um, understand Fourier series without understanding all these terms so we're going to be taking today i'm going to be taking what periodic function is in our next video we'll proceed along so i've already defined Fourier series here a Fourier series a function which is neither differentiable nor continuous can be expressed as a series of a given int interval as a series in a given interval called the Fourier series. So now, um, as that has been gotten out of the way, so now let's go to what periodic function is. Now, if you can remember your sine and your cosine graph, in which when you plot the graph, it gives you a sine wave, right? So um, for every sine wave, for every um, oscillation between that sine wave, we call it your period. If you can remember your O level. Um, oxidation and, and so on and so forth. So now I'm just going to be revising what a, what a period is. So now let's define what a period is. So a function f s is said f of x is said to be periodic if the function values repeat at a regular interval of the independent variable. This value, this regular interval between repetition, is called periodic function. It's called period of oxidation. Why the function f x is a periodic function? Now, as easy as that, this definition is quite understanding. Now, just let me just take for instance this this um graph you have here. Let's take for instance this graph you have here. Now, if you look at this graph, this is like a wave a wave sign graph, right? like sorry a wave a wave form of graph, right? Now, I'm trying to help you understand what a periodic what the period of oscillation is. Now. The, the function that gives us this graph is a periodic function. Now, a periodic function, a function will be a periodic function if it has period of oscillation along the independent variable. Now, where is the independent variable? This is the independent variable, right, which is x. So now, if you can, this is the starting point, right? Then it moves, then this is another starting point, right? Then it moves again, this is another starting point. Now, if you look at what I'm trying to say, the space or the distance between your two between two starting points of your graph is called your period period of oscillation now do you understand me now this is your starting point on this graph then it moves so it moves it moves and it starts again that's why i said it's oscillating then the space between two in, in two oscillations yeah the space between two oscillations is called your period right so now let's take for instance this your way your your graph of sine x then you understand it better then from there we can i, I will explain what amplitude and so other other factors we will need in um understanding Fourier series so now let's let's let me explain what amplitude is and your 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 the graph of y sine a sine x now a right here is your amplitude and your amplitude is always denoted at the back of your sign if it's cos any number at the back of your cos is your amplitude so your amplitude is your height i can call it i can call it height right is the height or the peak is also the depth or the crest is this called crest there's a word for this there's either crest or peak so this is also your amplitude and this is also your amplitude so this right here is your amplitude 
So now the amplitude is your a. So if it's one, if it's y is equal to five sine x, your peak here will be five, and your crest will be will be five. So that is for your for your sine graph. Now let's let's let me let, let, let me um, let's denote what um, let's denote the period of this graph, the period of oscillation of this graph. Now if you look at your sine graph is always plotted from zero to to pi to three sixty and so on and so forth. Your sine graph is plotted in regular intervals um, of two of two pi. So what I mean is that it's plotted. It's, sorry, it's plotted for every um, half oscillation. It's plotted for a regular interval of pi. So we have zero pi, two pi, and so on and so forth. So the sine graph is plotted from zero pi, two pi, and so on and so forth. Three pi, four pi, and so on and so forth. So now, what is our period of oscillation of this graph? Now you check. This is my starting point. Then it moves. Then this is another starting point. You take, you check your starting point from your zero, from this from this point here. So this is my starting point. Then it moves. Then I have another starting point here. So the space between this and this is my period. So my period for sine wave is two pi, as easy as that. So the same thing to also applies for. Um, cosine for your cosine wave and that is that so now let's let me let me let's sh let's let me show you the, the general form of the formula of a period whether it's for sine or for cosine so now given the the, the formula for the general formula for a period of a sine or cosine graph is given us if y is equal to a sine n x and um, or a cos n x then my period is equal to 360 over n which is equal to 2 pi over n where my a is equal to my amplitude so now look at this very well this is the general form of a period of a sine or a cosine graph. So it says if you are given a function a sine x or a cos n or a cos n x, the period of that function or that graph is equal to 360 over n, or which is also equal to 2 pi over n, and where a is your amplitude. Where n here, where n is your number of circles, cycles. In 360 so where n is denoted to be your number of circles in 360 now let's let's let me just use this illustration for your sine graph so how many circles can you find in the space of 360 not 360 is 2 pi so if you look at this is 0 and this is 2 pi and this 2 pi is 360 so how many circles can you find in the space of, of 2 pi which is only one circle one so a circle is what goes up and comes down, right? So this is just only one circle. So that is why there is an invisible one here. And that's why the period is just two pi over one. Now that which is also two pi. So I'm going to I'm going to do we're going to take an example, then you understand this um how to get the periodic uh, period of oxidation of a periodic function, the amplitude and the number of circles. So now let's go straight, let's go straight to the example. In this example, they said state the amplitude and the period of oscillation of the function, right? Then we can check from this my function here that 3a, given the using the general form, right? This is a sine nx. My a is 3, right? Which is my amplitude, and my n is 5, which is my number of circles in the space of 3 of 2 pi. So now let's plot the graph, let's just sketch the graph so you really understand um, what we are doing. So, I draw my um, dependent, uh, draw my y line, my coordinate axis. Draw my coordinate axis. This is x and this is y, and this is zero. Then they said we have a number of we have number of circles of we have five we have number of circles of five right in the space of three sixty. Remember, I said your sine and cosine graph are all always plotted. Um, your independent variable, variables are, are always in terms of 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on and so forth. Trigonometric um, thetas. So, um, let's plot the graph. And we have the number of circles of 5. So, now let's count. 1. 
right? Two, three, four, five. So this is five circles in the space of 360. So this is zero and this is two pi. So that is how, that's what they're telling you that that's how the graph goes along. You plot another number of five circles, four pi, another number of five circles, five pi, and so on and so forth. So now, we have plotted the graph and we know that our amplitude is 3, so we denote it as 3. Right. So now let's, how do we find our period? Remember the formula says, um, the period of this general function is equal to 360 or 2 pi over n. Right. So now let's substitute what we have. So we have um, 2 pi, where n is 5, right? 2 pi over 5. So this is my period. Period. So now let's look for 2, two pi over 5 along this graph. So meaning that I'm just trying to sep I'm just trying to divide this into uh, meaning I'm just trying to get the portion in which we only have one oscillation. Remember, period is just de just dealing with one 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 circle, right? The space between one circle. Now, if you look at this, this is one circle out of five, right? So if this is one circle out of five, right? so and from here to here, let's assume this is two pi, right? And this we are trying to take a portion of one circle out of five. So from here to here is my period two pi over five because this is starting point ending point this is another starting point and ending point so these are all periods so my period this just my period is just the space but right between one oscillation so this is one oscillation and then we have two pi so that is very easy so um on our next video i'm going to be treating how to analyze on how to get the periods and amplitude of non sinusoidal functions so basically what we did did in this video on periodic functions are basically a sinusoidal function so I can say we've covered, I say we co we've covered periodic function, the introduction, and um, sinusoidal function. So in the next video, we're going to be treating non-sinusoidal functions. Thank you guys for watching, and please and please subscribe.